Hi there, it's Katherine Norland. I am an actress at Darman Studios. And you guys have seen, there's a lot going on at the studio right now, right? Outside there's picketers and, and people with signs and people with a lot of opinions. A small group of actors who have worked at the studio are not happy about a bunch of stuff. And I'm getting tons of messages in my inbox and on my page asking me, where do you stand? What's going on? Where are you on this? Why are you silent? And I've been getting bombarded. And you wanna know where I've been? You wanna know why I've been silent? So much is going on. People are asking me if I'm fired. And so I wanted to get on here and explain things from my point of view. And so guys, I'm just one person and this is my humble opinion of my experiences of working at Darman Studios and as an actress in Hollywood for over 20 years. I've been mistreated on a lot of sets. <laughs> but let's let me have you start off by hearing I want you fans to know what it's like for us actors. And for those of you who loved our man, the show, the actors on the show, the context of what it's like to be an actor in Hollywood, just so you know where we're coming from, from a performer level, those of us who are on smaller shows, shows like YouTube or little short film projects, projects that are non-union, it's, it's, it's difficult for us. And in the real acting world, um, especially for those of us who are C-list and D-list actors, right? We're not considered B-list, those who are popular on TV shows or A-list stars who are in big recognizable A-list movies, the people that you see at the Oscars and stuff like that. For those of us who are D and C-list actors, our names aren't going to get any projects greenlit. Like, that means funded. Our names aren't gonna get a big movie funded, right? I may be a recognizable face now, and well, frankly, that's mostly due to the platform I have been given through acting on Darman, because even though I'd been in 150 things before, then nobody knew who I was. So I'm gonna be speaking from the perspective of an actor who is somewhat unknown. Now, those of us who are on Darman aren't big movie stars, right? We're not with one of the top three agents who um, are, we're not the kind of actors who just have big movies coming to us with, <laughs> you know, Oscar potential high paid feature films um, written by, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning people or, or whatever. <laughs> we're not, we're not necessarily getting our door beat down for big projects like that. But most of us are artists, actors, musicians, performers. That's what it's like for 97, 98% of us actors out there. It's a struggle. And even actors who are SAG and AFTRA, that is the union for actors and TV stars. I read an article a few years ago that said that only 3% 3% of union actors actually make a full-time living at acting, 3%. So it's not unheard of as, you know, an independent artist to not make <laughs> a ton of money doing this. It's just kind of, we kind of know what we sign up for when we come out to Hollywood. So it's, it's not a big surprise that it's hard to make a living as a performer. Right? Most of us do this performing, this acting, because we love it. We feel called to it, right? We want to do it. We want to use our gifts and our talents that light us up to give back. But in order to do it, we are hustling day in and day out for those gigs. From going to the next job, to the next job, to the next job. Our jobs are never promised. It's never like secure in the industry. I don't think they are in any industry. But, you know, if you're under contract, I suppose, with a studio and in the contract, you're on a series and it's spelled out that your character will be on a certain number of seasons and a certain number of episodes that you will appear in, 
then it's some then it's somewhat stable unless you really do something <laughs> to make the producers mad and then they write your character out and they have a sudden death or whatever but seriously those of us who are not at that level we move from project to project gig to gig you may have one day of filming on one project you may have 12 days of filming on a project who knows you know it all depends on how big the gig is but as actors who are not under a contract and not on a union show we are constantly looking for our next gig sometimes people on union shows are constantly looking for their next gig it's the same with mus musicians right you're just looking for opportunities to act and that's why like when you see actors who love acting when they're not on the show that they're currently filming, they will be out doing plays or they'll put together a one woman show or maybe maybe they join a band. Whatever it is, they love performing. So they're always trying to find a way to perform, right? Those who are on TV shows, on the hiatus from the TV show, they'll go out and do a movie. Whatever they can to keep up their craft of acting. So for my first probably 18 years in LA, what my day would look like amongst all the other things to do to make money, I would get up, do my daily things, but then I would submit my headshots and I would send my resumes and headshots for jobs, dozens and dozens of jobs several times a day. I would get on the different casting websites, LA casting, actors access, backstage, all of that. I would spend a couple of hours a day submitting myself for any role that I might be right for or might be right for me. I might submit to 50 things a day. I might submit to 200 projects a day. And then it was a waiting game. Who am I going to hear back from? Who's going to give me an audition from the jobs that I submitted to? Who's going to be willing to, you know, to give me a chance? And you may get one audition a week. Some don't even get that. You may get 10 or 15 auditions a week. You never know. And you study your character and you pick out your clothes and you do your makeup and you learn your lines and you, you go drive to that location or you may sit in traffic for two hours each way to go and perform in the room and you'll only have sometimes two minutes in the room and it took you six to eight hours out of your day sitting in traffic to get ready studying your lines, doing your character, paying for childcare so you can go to your audition without your kid distracting you and messing up your audition. Not that that's ever happened to me. Just for that two minute opportunity to show someone what you've got. And as an actor, you might book only one out of every 10 or one out of every 20 auditions. So every day you're submitting, submitting, submitting possibly to 50 or 100 roles. Every week you might be auditioning for one to 15 things. You might only book one gig a month, twice a month if the heavens have opened up. But, and, and they're for jobs that pay maybe 150 to $200 a day. And now you've pretty much taken like three days out of your life if you count the initial audition, the callback, possibly the fitting, plus the gas, the childcare, you know, all that time to audition to get maybe one day on a set. It, it's crazy. It's a crazy life we lead. Like actors are kind of, we have to be kind of, whatever in the head to, to, to do this. Now, if you're really blessed, you might book five days guest star role on some show and then you might be good for a couple months with that pay. But my point is it's a constant uphill battle to be able to act. And as independent actors who aren't well known at all, we spend 1% of our life acting and 99% of our life trying to find a job where we can act. And when you're starting out as an actor and you're new, you're told you have to pay your dues. What does that mean? Well, it basically means that an actor works for free until people perceive you as being good enough to get a paycheck. I know it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous, but you know, most performers, actors, and singers, they do free shows to get exposure, to get, to get noticed. Um, also, in order to act and do what you love, you have to have side hustles. There's a joke in Hollywood that when you ask an actor what they do, they'll say, actor, waiter, whatever, because we do a lot of stuff. 
when we're not being paid to act to keep a roof over our head, right? To keep our lives floating. Um, when I started out, the pay was so low in acting, really, it was non-existent, <laughs> that I didn't really make anything to speak of my first seven years as an actor. 90% of the acting I did was like for free, because you're trying to build a resume, and you're trying to build a demo reel, and you're trying to just get your acting chops, and I'm going to get to the Darman experience in a minute. <laughs> Bear with me. But a lot of times you're doing like for me, I probably did 30 or 40 films just for copy meals and credit, which means they feed you, they put your name in the credit, and they give you a copy of it. But honestly, 80% of the time, I never even got a copy of the work, so I was basically working for water and pretzels, because that's what they considered food on some of these low-budget sets. It wasn't these elaborate catering meals, catering meals like a production would have with a substantial budget. So nothing we do as D or C list actors is like what you see in the movies when they're having these big fancy dinners with lobster or steak. That's not like a regular thing for those of us. And even those of us who are have, you know, on certain shows, they don't, you don't even get the good stuff. There's like less food for the lesser actors, for the non-union and whatever. The Darman Show, right? That's the show in question. Everyone wants to know, how are you being treated? Is everyone just getting stomped on? And, and are all these people, is all this like going on, uh, unfollow Darman, protest Darman, is that, is that like what's really happening to everybody? Because I'm getting all these messages saying, people are like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for you, that you actors have to go through this and all of that. So I, that's what I really want to address. Now, I've probably, speaking of big budget films, I've probably only had my own trailer in three productions in like 20 years. And that's, you know, after doing close to 150 projects that I acted in before I even started working at Darman. Being an unknown actor, <laughs> It's the hustle that I'm talking about, day in, day out to get jobs. You gotta be scrappy, right? Most actors are working two or three jobs. I mean, I've always had side hustles. I mean, right now I have um, my coaching clients that I do life coaching for. I've got the books I'm writing. I've got the online courses. I've got tenants. <laughs> I'm a landlord. I like, I got stuff going on, right? Um, motivational speaking at schools and churches and events there's 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 always side hustles and now back in the olden days of the 1940s or 50s there would be actors that would be contract players and they would be linked to a studio under contract they would grab them up and they can only work for that studio. They're not allowed to work anywhere else, do any other films with any other studio. So absolutely, under that condition, they had to make their livelihood at that studio. The difference is we at Darman Studios are not a contract player. This is not our only gig. It's one of many different things that we do um, as we're independent contractors. And I'm not an employee there. The actors are not employees there. So if I was working there for 40 hours a week and this was my only regular job, ah, yeah, I would totally expect to be able to provide a living to myself and pay all my bills. But as an actor, I'm not a full-time employee. I'm only emailed for a role based on if there's a role that I'm right for, my type, right? Based on the characters I play, if the script matches my age, gender, ethnicity, right? According to what the script needs best to tell that story. And because of that, we aren't working every week. We get offers when we're right for a role and sometimes weeks or months can go by before they feel a role is right for us. Um, it happened to me. Two months went by and I didn't I didn't uh, hear about a role. This was a couple years ago. Uh, two months went by, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> but that's the way it is in Hollywood, right? Unless you're already a star, 
And if you're a star, you call more of the shots, right? You can play more characters than you're initially typecast for. Speaking of which, that's one beautiful thing about Darman Studios is they gave me and many actors such great opportunities to play different types of roles than we've been able to play other places. Like, I'm not, it's not even what this is about, but I just, I was just like thinking, man, that's, that's pretty awesome. So now as I share my opinion here, since you guys want to know my opinion about what is happening and this might, this might be going against popular opinion based on what you're seeing and what's going on right now. It might be contrary to the narrative of what you've been hearing because other people aren't speaking up. Only the people who are upset are speaking up. But sometimes it takes bravery to speak your opinion. And I know I need to let go of my fears and share this with you. Um, I tried to record this a couple times earlier today, but I was upset and I was crying too much. And I just like had to get it together before I could film this. So I spent several hours composing my thoughts about what I was gonna say about the situation at Darman Studios and the people out there protesting. So this is my perspective and this is my point of view. And I decided I can't be silent about it anymore. And not because I've been there from day one, but I started within the first couple of months of Darman starting his channel and doing these videos. And I have been there four and a half years. And as an actor who has been in more videos than any other actor, and I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying that because being there more has given me more experiences with the cast, with the crew, with Dar, with everybody, which also means I've had many more times to witness how they treat people. And 99% of my experiences on set have been positive ones. I have never had them not pay me. I have never had them not listen to my concerns about safety. I mean, there's even uh, one occasion I wanna take into consideration where there's like certain lines of a script that I, you know, had an issue with. Well, that's probably happened several times, probably several times I had issues with certain things in the script and they listened to my concern and sometimes changed it and made it, you know, fit what my concerns were. And, and there was never, if, if there was, they have never not paid me, but if there was ever some kind of an error in the paycheck for whatever reason, I would email and it would be, that only happened like once or twice, but they would immediately rectify it, send me an email, get on it right away and send the money. So, man, to be honest, it's been a wonderful atmosphere. The camaraderie there at Darman Studios really is like family. When they say Darman fam, we, we see people that we haven't worked with in a while and we run to hug each other. We are supportive of each other. When, when we're at work at Darman Studios, it's, it's one of the very few sets, one of the few sets, and this is after being on well over 100 sets, where there hasn't been stress, anxiety, angst. A lot of sets you work on in Hollywood, there's always an AD yelling or directors or producers that are yelling and people are upset and the atmosphere is like, at Darman Studios, the atmosphere is calm. It's cool. It's a chill place to work. And, and like I mentioned, I'm not coming from a place of only having worked on a couple of sets or a couple of things. I've been at this a couple of decades and I can honestly say, being an actor for 20 years, it's been one of my best experiences. And I started in 2018 there. And you know, my goal and purpose as an actor, speaker and author and, and a coach is to provide people hope, to show them it's possible to follow your dreams. And frankly, I had just decided to quit being an actor. I had decided to quit being an actor. 
um, in 2018 because of the roles I was being offered were either inconsequential or they were films that weren't spreading a positive message. I don't want to do that anymore. I wanted to put positive messages out in the world and I told God I'm done. I'm not going to do this acting thing anymore. It's not fulfilling for me. And then a beautiful soul named Ricky contacted me and gave me the opportunity to audition for Dar Man. Before there was even a studio to film at, right? I got the chance to be called back again and again and again and again to do more roles. Now, coming from the place of an actor who is used to hustling day in, day out to get jobs, which didn't really pay any better, usually worse, and weren't putting positive messages out into the world, I was thrilled, thrilled to work at a company that wanted to make a difference in the world, to put out the kind of content that would inspire people to be better, that aligned with who I was and what I wanted to be as a positive force in the world. It was honestly like an answer to prayer, to not have to hustle gig after gig, day after day, and to be able to put messages out in the world that had hope and help people see from a different perspective. And I started working at Darman and, and my experiences there, honestly, it's been refreshing. And, and, and I see actors complaining about their pay right now. And yeah, I, I get it. If you ask any actor or any employee anywhere at any job, if they would want to make more money, they would all say yes, of course. Who doesn't want to make more money? Everybody, wherever they work, everybody does. They probably all say yes. So the thing is, as an independent contractor, we get offered a role and it tells us in advance at Darman Studios how much we will be paid and the number of days we'll be working. And if you decide that's good enough for you, great. But you're not stuck there. You're not under contract. You can go and do another project. If you got a project that pays better, hey, go do that gig. No one would fault you. But we know what we're getting into and what the pay is. It's listed before we even decide to say yes. We know what we're saying yes to. Personally, I feel so blessed that I'm working at a job, doing what I love and that I feel like is part of my purpose. And that I'm not bagging groceries for minimum wage, you know? And there's nothing wrong with bagging groceries. It's not what I'm saying. But working a job that you love because I want to use my acting skills that I have and, and some of the fans out there because of the stuff that's being posted right now are misconstruing what the actors are saying who are protesting when they say that they're not paid a living wage. Some of the fans are thinking we're not even getting minimum wage. And that's just not true. We are getting more than double what minimum wage is. Okay? And every year, every single year that I have worked at Darman Studios, I have gotten a raise every year. And of the other regular actors that I have asked, they have two. Of course, I haven't polled every single actor. I don't know every single person and you know what's going on with them because frankly, it's none of my business. Because as an independent contractor or a non, especially for non-union job, there's no union to set the scale, to stipulate what the minimum should be. And I know tons of people in regular jobs who do not get a raise every single year or if they do like I had a friend she just got a raise of two cents two cents I have coaching clients that get raises of f 10 cents 15 cents 50 cents Dar has given me and I think pretty much the other actors I don't can't speak for everyone but I can speak for myself he has given me a raise every year of several dollars more a year so and I'm not saying listen guys I'm not saying Dar is perfect, he can do no wrong. N nobody is, right? Except for Jesus. Okay, <laughs> but we're all fallible. 
We're all human. We all make mistakes. We learn, we grow, we try to improve. Yeah, there's been, there's been, if I'm being honest, there's been a few times where I thought, oh, things could be a little different. You know, things could be better at the studio. And sometimes I speak up about it and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I keep it to myself. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's not worth talking about, whatever. Sometimes I put a note in the suggestion box. <laughs> and then within a month or two, I see that they've taken care of some of those changes, right? And, and things have gotten better. So I see there's effort being made. It's not that they're unwilling to listen from my point of view, from my opinion, or take our thoughts into consideration. But sometimes it's not all of our suggestions are appropriate for what their goals are and what they're doing or what they're trying to do. And I'm not going to tell them how to run their business, but I have seen several things changed when suggestions are made. And I, you know, well, I said we needed another makeup mirror and makeup station in Studio One. <laughs> and within a couple of months, it was there. It was there. I mean, that may seem like an insignificant request, but it helped a lot. I asked for I healthier snacks. Hi, sweetheart. I asked for healthier snacks and it, I got them. You know, so I, I feel like if it's not an unreasonable request um, and if it's asked in an appropriate manner, they, they do it. Also, all the directors that I have worked with they're concerned. They're concerned about the actors. Whenever I'm on set, they're like, are you okay? Are you ready to go? What can we do? Do you need a few minutes? You know, it's never like, they're never barking at us. Um, they're asking like, how can I help you? They're wanting to accommodate us. And Darman Studios always pays us promptly. So many actors I've talked to love that. I cannot tell you the number of acting jobs that I have done where you're waiting two weeks and three weeks and four weeks and five weeks and a month and two months for your paycheck. And you're having to call and pester production to get your pay. And here at the studio, we're paid within two or three days after the production wraps. And that, that is unheard of completely from all the sets I've been on. Here's the thing, we all live in the same world and everything is about perspective, it really is. And you can choose to look at the good in a situation or you can choose to focus on the negative. For me, personally, I live my life in such a way where I look for the good in people and I look for the good in situations. Maybe not everybody does that. I look at the good things about Darman Studios and the good things far, far, far outweigh any negative things. Having a place to go act on a regular basis, sometimes even weekly to share my acting work where I'm not having to audition constantly for 10 or 20 things and prove myself, that's a huge blessing. When I started working there, it was such a good match for me because they wanted to put out the kind of content that aligns with what I feel that I am called to do. So here's the thing, we all have a choice in life. We can choose to see the bad in a situation or we can choose to see the good in a situation. And I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, think that Darman Studios is a great place to work. And I am not being paid to say this. The studio, not even Darman, knows that I'm making this video. <laughs> Do I think the studio is perfect? No. Then again, no studio is. Not even the big boys making multi-million dollar pictures. You will find people complaining about the big, huge studios, where they have hair, where they have makeup, where they have wardrobe, where they have mm, wonderful catering, whatever it is you can still find people complaining there. Usually it's about the people and how they're being treated. I don't know. But there's things, yeah, sometimes I go, oh, maybe this could go better. It'd be nice if we had this or whatever. Sure, you can say that. You can say that about any job. You can say that about the best jobs. But I feel like when I'm there, I'm heard. If I have a concern, let me just give you one or two concrete examples of that. When we were shooting the feature, Girl Finds Out She's Adopted, that was 
that was the one one time that we had wardrobe. <laughs> And the wardrobe person and I did not see eye to eye. And there was supposed to be a certain type of dress. She said she was going to get me. She showed me the colors. It was perfect. It was wonderful. It was going to be a good fit for me. But then when I showed up to the shoot, she got me this type of dress that looked like it was, it was a terrible color on me. It looked like puke. It was big and boxy and baggy. And I looked like a grandma from the 1980s. And I'm usually pretty chill about these things. But I was like, um, Ruben? He's the main guy who runs Darman Studios. Uh, Ruben, the production manager, I was like, um, I just feel like I can't wear this. I'm gonna look ridiculous. And he's a guy, so he doesn't really know if something looks good or not. But he saw that I was not comfortable. And do you know what he did? He didn't say, wear it anyway. We picked this out for you. The show must go on. He stopped the production. He changed the shoot to cover some other bit of footage or do something else, and he let me go to Target with the wardrobe person and pick out an outfit that I felt more comfortable wearing. And that's the type of little extra things that they do at the studio that makes you feel valued and heard. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes you're stuck with whatever prop they have and you're like, oh, this prop is whatever. <laughs> or this outfit is, oh, this doctor's jacket's a little big on me. But that's honestly such minor things. Or it's the nice gestures, like they got me a cake when they knew it was my birthday the first year. And then and then they found out I was vegan. And the next time I was on set and I worked, they got me vegan, gluten-free cupcakes. And I know that's an extra pain. You got to order from a special place and they're more expensive. Also, they threw me, that, threw me that celebration when I reached 100 episodes and had all the kind of healthy snacks that I like. And maybe that sounds like a little thing. Maybe that sounds trite to you. But those are the little things of um, extra bits of appreciation that I remember and I hold on dear to. And I see the little extra effort made. So, you know, if they don't have a good snack for me one day or they, you know... I have to do my own makeup. Sometimes I think that's better because makeup artists don't always do the makeup the way I like it. But I'm trying to see the good in every situation. And even during the COVID shutdown, things were hard for everyone. And Darn Man sent me a beautiful gift basket full of treats and snacks. And so my point of view, I've seen kindness and generosity. And I see them putting out these beautiful messages. This is my experience. Most of you have already heard the other side from the actors who aren't happy. And I love those actors and I appreciate them. And I'm so sorry they feel hurt or disrespected. And, and I see them and, and, and I, I feel sad for them. But I think there's so many speaking up for that. And I don't see anyone speaking up in favor for Dar in the studio. And I think it's because it's scary. It's scary to have your voice out there that goes contrary to the louder voices you're hearing. I've been thinking about doing this video for days, but honestly, I was too chicken. I was too chicken to be like, oh, the other actors are going to hate me now. But when I've been seeing what they've been putting out, it was just grieving me. I've been sitting here weeping. So upset about this whole situation. And I just, wow, it's it's been a lot. Ever since Saturday when I heard this was going to go down, just so grieved and tormented inside me seeing these accusations and some of them are speculations and uh, that are being put forth. And I feel like it is my duty to share my positive experiences. And I know I am not the only one who's had positive experiences because there are hundreds of actors who work there who've had positive experiences. If you look at IMDb, you see the actors list. You'll see hundreds of actors that he has given opportunities to to act on these shows. He's given so many new actors a start. He has helped so many existing actors with regular work and more followers. And, you know, unless you're an actor or a musician and maybe, I don't know, maybe you can't appreciate the fact that there's like regular work to use our skills and our gifts and our talents in a positive message out there in the world. 
Like I said, I was hustling 12 to 16 hours a day to maybe book one thing a month that wasn't even putting out a positive message into the world. So to have this platform, to be able to shine, to be able to give people hope and to be able to do it on a regular basis, to be able to expand and stretch my muscles as an actor, playing different types of roles and characters that I've never had been offered to play in anything else. I've been afforded these opportunities and I am nothing but grateful. So I am not going to address all the things the protesters are saying and all their grievances because they're doing a fine job of putting it out there. So, you know, I really feel like the studio can take care of that on their own. I want to bring up what some of the actors um, are not saying, but also feel, you know, the living wage thing. I know I already addressed it. This has got some of the fans thinking though, by how they're expressing it, that we're being paid way below minimum wage, which just, it's not true. Independent contractors, we take gigs, we can take them anywhere at any time, and we aren't tied under a contract or employed there. We're welcome to come and go, to say yes or no to a job. We know in advance how much it's going to pay. And for me personally, if I felt like I was working somewhere where I wasn't getting enough or wasn't valued, I would just go somewhere else that I felt valued or that I thought would pay better. You know, it's give and take anywhere you work. What, you know, what are you wanting? Go get it then, like go get it. If I ever had a job and I asked that job for a raise or for whatever, and they say, no, I just decide if I wanna stay or not. If I don't like the pay, I'll go find a different job. You know, it's a free country. We get to do what we want. And I, I truly hope this is not coming across as insensitive, but maybe it is. I mean, I'm gonna offend somebody, right? But I felt like I had to say my side of the story, how I feel. We are not locked in there. We don't have to be there. We get the opportunity. We're not under contract, we're not stuck. We can go anywhere else to work if we don't, if we don't like it. We have liberty to go out and do any other project for any amount of pay that we can get. And if we don't like the terms, we don't have to take every production they offer us. I've said no to many productions that Darman has sent me. I've been traveling or I've been doing something else. A couple of scripts I didn't like. I was like, I don't like the script. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but we're not penalized for that, right? Now I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate from the protesters or the fans who feel for them. And I do feel for them, but I, I can't be a party to the things that they're saying because that's just not true in my experience. So I cannot stay silent and watch this studio on this beautiful platform that has made a difference for so many people get thrown under the bus and have everyone assuming that we all feel that way because we don't, I don't, and many actors don't. You know, there are many actors you don't see at the protest who are still continuing to work who don't feel that way. So I had to share, not, you know, just so you know um, my experiences. And I don't think I'm in the like minority. There's something called the silent majority and, and they aren't talking about it. But listen, if it was as bad as, as some of these people are saying it is. If it was really that bad and the general consensus was this is a horrible, wretched place to work, then the actors wouldn't still be showing up. They're still filming every day. And and I know a lot of us are scared right now and we don't know how to feel. And, and I'm sure, you know, even the people picketing were probably scared to do that. They were probably scared to speak their mind and felt, but they felt like it was something they had to do. And the beauty of living in America is that we have the freedom of speech and we are allowed to pick it. We're allowed to speak our mind and we should respect each other's feelings. And I respect their feelings. 
However, someone's negative experience does not cancel out the many and dozens and dozens of us who have had positive experiences. So I know I'm not the only actor on the show that is blessed to go out and make a difference and do these messages and, and see how it's changing people for the better. I know even the actors picketing have gotten dozens of messages from fans saying how these shows have profoundly affected their life. I've got a message from a gal that one of these videos that I was in about the boy that was about to jump off the bridge, more hugs, less suicide is a sign I'm holding. She watched that video. It popped up on her phone when she was about to commit suicide and she didn't because of that video. So this channel has inspired hope in so many people and there's a goodness and a humanity out there. It's shown us and it's unfortunate to think that many fans out there aren't hearing the other side of the story about what's going on at Darman Studios. They're only hearing the negative things that, that people have to say and have experienced. And so unfortunately it's popular in this day and age to wanna cancel someone if you're upset to, you know, we see, sometimes we see someone who's successful and we think, oh, they must be stepping on people to get there. And it's hard for business owners. They're taking on all the risk. They're taking on all the responsibility and it all falls on them. If some employees feel like they're not getting what they deserve, they could try to turn everything upside down for you. And I'm a business owner myself, so I understand. I understand the pressure of being able to try to provide for all your employees. It's not easy running a business, renting out spaces, making sure everyone is paid and you're, you're you know, having to pay the employees and the buildings first before, you know, you get what's left and you're the one that keeps everything running. That can be so stressful. I only have three employees and I get stressed out sometimes. I feel that pressure of not having enough. Like, can I make my mortgage this month? Oh, so I can't imagine having 60 or 70 or 100 employees, whatever Dar has, running both Darman Studios and Live Glam Cosmetics. It's a lot of pressure and stress and he's not perfect. He's gonna mess up but he wants to make videos that inspire and help people. And he could have done anything with his spare time. He could have just made some dumb joke videos to get laughs or antics or, you know, I believe he's doing the best he can. It's not easy starting a business from the ground up, paying tons of employees. And here's how I choose to live my life. I just believe the best in people. I believe that most people are really doing the best they can. I believe Darman Studios is doing the best they can. Yeah, there are a lot of growing pains with the fast expansion. And, but I don't see that this company is screwing people over like some people are believing now. I see them giving actors and filmmakers opportunities for steady work and putting out messages that they can be proud of. I just wanna say it's nice to be an actor working at a studio that's aligned with what you're doing. And personally, I don't think Darman owes me a living. I don't think anyone owes me a living. If I ever feel like I'm not making enough, then I'll go work somewhere else, you know, or I'll find side hustles to make up for the difference. And yeah, this is my opinion. It's going against those who are being the loudest right now and I'm prepared for the nasty messages to come back to me. I hope they don't. I hope people can respect my opinion as I respect theirs. So I wanted to share with you my side because I can't stay silent any longer with what's been happening. This, this strike has had me in knots and in tears. And I wanted to make it clear for anyone who has been touched, moved, or inspired by his content. I want you and the fans to know that I think my boss Dar, his staff, and the production manager Ruben are kind and fair and good. And I've always been treated with respect. Catherine Norland, signing off. You're a champion if you made it this far in the video. Oh my gosh. Sorry for the rambling. I just couldn't hold it in any longer. God bless you. Live true, love hard, shine bright.